Generic greetings and welcome to Gloomhaven. Today's beverage is a nice hearty and warming bovril. Very nice indeed. Or meat tea as some people tend to call it in certain parts. Not really too sure what those parts are but uh, probably strange ones at that. Either way, welcome to Gloomhaven. This is the digital rendition of the board game of the same name. The board game I believe originally released in 2017 to critical acclaim. It's currently number one on Board Game Geek and personally one of my most played and uh, most enjoyed board games of all time. I think it took myself and three friends about maybe a year to a year and a half to complete it and that's playing about once a week so there's a lot lot of legs in that and obviously because of that I was very excited to see that there was going to be a digital edition of Gloomhaven and when this was released into early access in 2019 I believe September of 19 when I did videos originally it was okay and that was about as far as I could go because it didn't have a campaign, it didn't have multiplayer. I don't even think those things were planned at the time. I think they were just looking to make a skirmish game. Um, but calls were made and notes were passed on and the message was uh, loud and clear. People wanted a full, 100% faithful uh, rendition of that uh, tabletop board game. And to be honest, with the odd minor caveat aside, that's what we have now. We have campaign mode, we have online multiplayer, there's uh, a level editor, there's modding, there's... Uh, what's called the Guildmaster mode which is that original skirmish game a full in-depth tutorial and it just is that tabletop game on PC that's the long and short of it if you have played the original and you want to play it on PC let's say with the odd caveat aside this is what you're looking for it is exceptional if you have no clue what the game is then well stick around I'm going to show you just a little bit of it as I said there are multiple modes to play my personal and I think most I would guess uh, <laughs> mode that people want to play would be campaign that's where that's where the heart of the game lies there is a guildmaster mode which is like a skirmish game um and also watch i think of great note is the tutorial i don't think it's unfair to say the game can be perhaps difficult to get into it's not an easy game to pick up but the tutorials are pretty good i've only played a couple of them because well i know the i know the board games and the rules so well but i've loaded into most of them if not completed them um and yeah it just tells you every little facet of the game and gets you up to speed fairly quickly you've also got a how to play mode as well i say mode it's just basically the manual if you want to read the manual but there you go either way with that said and done let's go to campaign and i will load in i've played the version Version 1, I've played about 30 hours of this. The majority of that have, has been with a friend uh, playing at co-op, uh, two characters uh, each. And this one I'm going to show you now is the party that I've made, just to basically show you it. This is a uh, single player. So you can play it single player, you can play it co-op. I've only played it two player co-op, but it can go up to four, so there you are. So this is the world map. The idea is that you create a party. Uh, the, the party's called What's Your Int, uh, in this particular case, and you select some characters. So for example, we can get a mercenary and you've got six mercenaries to start out oh i should also say spoiler alert you know this, this is a story driven game and you know i will be showing you some spoilers in that one but uh yeah probably not too many so you've got different characters each of them have different cards and different strengths and weaknesses etc i've gone with the craig hart and with the scoundrel i have played all of the characters um the tinker is probably the one i've least played mind thief is one of my most played but there you are so i say different strengths and weaknesses and they do different things so the brute is about basically taking damage lots of health etc it's it's the damage dealer in tank then you've got the spell weaver which is range damage and uh yeah anyway we'll go back out with that so i've created a party i've done a couple of missions and this is our world map so this is gloomhaven it is a town and um things happen in gloomhaven which we probably won't get into too much uh it's just a lot of nonsense basically going on and uh, we have different missions around the map i think there are hmm how many missions are in gloomhaven are there a hundred missions in gloomhaven uh in the board game maybe maybe more depending on expansions and additions etc but yeah i think the average is about 60 odd missions to complete it so we've got a couple of missions here we've got an inox encampment make an example of the inox who crossed jexera and we've got a crypt of the damned investigate the bend in the still river and that's what we're going to attempt so as i said these are our two characters you've actually got different skins as well which is quite cool um i'll show you the cards were in the game and the moment to moment because that's where it's at 
Um, let's go over to the Crypt of the Damned. So we're going to click on that. We can see it says, Investigate the Bend in the Still River. The uh, It's an unnamed location, core quest. So there's core quests and side quests. The objective is to kill all the enemies in all rooms. So we basically have to go from one place to another and uh, murder hobo our way through this thing. We have archers, cultists, earth demons, living bones, which I detest because of their shield and target too, and also a wind demon, which I've always got to say a wild demon, but there you are. Let's Let's go to travel and our our mercenary group will head out onto a road and we get a road event so here's our encounter you are feeling a tad hungry as you walk down the road you are considering stopping for a meal when you come across a thicket of bushes covered in red berries the berries look delicious but you hesitate they could be poisonous so i could eat them and we may get a positive event we may get a negative event or i could pass the berries and just eat rations um I think this is where there might be a change. So in the tabletop game, I think it was fairly set, if I remember rightly. So there were certain berries you could eat and you'd be fine. There'd be bonuses, some were poisonous, etc. And I think it was set. Whereas in this, it might even be semi-random. Not entirely sure, it's just what I've heard and read. So yeah, uh, let's just pass the berries by and we'll continue on. Not wanting to regret making a stupid decision, you refrain from eating the berries and continue. So you get a road event every time you travel to a location, except if it's linked, but you know, that's, that's only certain. Ones. The bandit commander's proclamations of a gloom do not sit well in your stomach as you search the bend in the still river. No. Something here holds an interest for these maniacs. It is narrated and it is brilliant at that. You are somewhat surprised to find the ruins of an ancient crypt half covered in moss and ivy. Mm. The history of this place is old and dark. With no other information to go on, you head down into the depths. Whatever these supposed bandits are up to, you're determined to find out. Even after you stumble across a large group of them, along with some reanimated dead at the bottom of the stairs. Hmm, just bandits, are they? Okay. So, this is where we have to get our... Um, we have to select a, a, a battle goal. So, along with just doing the main objective, each... Each of the mercenaries, or I might say characters, I may say mercenaries, it's interchangeable. These guys here. Um, these have a like a, a personal thing that they are trying to get done, and also um, different personal objectives each mission. Because once they've complete that, they'll leave. It, they're not like they're not totally dedicated to this job. Um, they basically can retire and will retire eventually, and that will unlock different characters. That's the whole uh, point of the game. Either way, uh, Workhorse, we've got gained 13 more experience points during the scenario, or Layabout, gained 7 or fewer experience points during the scenario. Um, right, I mean, <laughs> they are di diametrically opposed, them ones. I'm going to go with uh, Layabout, why not? Um, for That's, a uh, you, you name them as well, that's Stone Yeater, because he can fling stones, and this is uh, Goldie Grabber, because she's got loot too. Uh, Streamliner, have five or more total cards in your hand, uh, and discard at the end of the scenario, or pacifists kill three or fewer monsters. Well, that's the main killing machine, so I'm going to have to go with that. I should point out that sometimes you just won't be able to complete these, that's not uncommon. Because uh, you're trying to fight the enemies, your personal goals, your battle goals, the objectives of the map. There's a lot going on uh, and you have to be sometimes selfish, sometimes a team player. And it's just when to know, uh, you know, which one you need to do. So loading into the map and we shall see what we have uh, to face off against. Hopefully something uh, something quite relatively easy. I mean, or, or could you sit on a black screen? Ah, there we go. You've made a mistake coming here. One of the bandits hisses. Aye. You disagree. You are <laughs> right where you want to be. Aye. So, uh, first things first, um, I think it looks great. It's obviously stylized, but lightning's lovely. Long shadows getting cast. The terrain's varied. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, enemies. We have one, two, three enemies in front of us. We have Living Bones, Living Bones Elite, so they're slightly harder to, uh, well, they're basically just better. And then a Bandit Archer on the on the back. The main takeaway is that you have to play two cards a turn for each character. So, for example, Craig Hart here, um, or Craig Hart, some people say, either way. Um, each card has a top and bottom ability. So, for example, this Explosive Punch, destroy one adjacent obstacle, get attack four, that attacks around. 
Cool. What's the bottom one? It's move four. You're probably up on what movement is, so it's hex based. One, two, three, four, we could get there, etc. There's also a number in the middle, it's also shown there, and this is your initiative. So the first card you play will be your initiative, rated 1 to 99. Uh, is there a 1? Hmm. Either way, it's the lowest goes first. So if I play, for example, that, I'm going to go on initiative 13. Once everybody's picked and you don't know what they've picked, uh, it then makes the initiative order and then we go down that route. So sometimes if you've got more people in the party, it can become extremely calamitous. <laughs> So there you are. Um, what do I want to do then? Well, I want to probably go ahead and I'm going to go for a pausing strike. I'm going to use the bottom part of it. On the next six melee attacks targeting you, gain retaliate too. So the whole point is if they hit me, they're going to get hit back. But I don't want to... Um, I don't want to necessarily uh, go really early. Um, maybe just go... Actually, I do probably want to go early, because if I do that, it means that um, I'll be able to get the opposing strikes off first. So this is where you have to think about what they've got going on as well. I'm going to go with Earthen Clod, which is a 38 initiative, and the top one is Attack 2, Range 5, and then it also has an ability that if you burn a certain element, which you can make, then, uh, yeah, we'll be able to immobilize. But I don't have that in play, so there we are. Over to this guy, I'm going to go straight away with a single out, which is on the next four attacks we gain plus two attack and we're also going to go with i think attack two to range three um well i'm going to put i'm going to put the craig hat up there and i'm going to put the thief on the back there one two three one two three so that should work out if i did throwing stars and yeah i'll just make sure that those are swapped out so we're going on initiative 10 then 38 and then we don't know what those are let's end the selection and they have their draw which is Actually, not amazing, but uh, it's okay. So they're going on 12, that's the Living Bones, followed by the Bones Elite, which is 12, and the Archer. However, the both Bones are only going to do Shield 1 and then heal themselves, so they're not even coming forward to attack me. Of the archer is going to move and then attack for three at ranged four. Either way, continue. Let's get the scoundrel on the go. So we'll go for on the next four attacks targeting me. Uh, Enemies adjacent to none of their allies gain plus two, confirm the action, and then that casts. So you can see we're casting that ability, and then we'll do the throwing knives, which I'm going to attack one and then two characters, because it is target two. This, by the way, is the initiative. We'll confirm that. And there's a minus one roll. You have essentially a deck of cards that you would draw, which is shown on the left-hand side here. So we have no minus twos. We have one botch. We have uh, a couple of minus ones, loads of zeros, and then it goes up from there. You also get certain cards that can give you, like, push or... Um, immobilize, wound, poison, etc. But it's depending on the characters because each each of these mercenaries has different decks. So <laughs> there's how someone managed to make this, I do not know. Um, I have the option to end my turn, but I can also use a stamina potion which recovers one of my cards. I am going to do that, and I'm going to get back my throwing knives. Um, some people may say we're using that too early, but there you are. We've grabbed that, and now it's their turn. So they're going to basically buff themselves up, so they're going to get extra armor and heal themselves. So all that damage that I did, all of one of it, it's going to matter for nothing. But I did get an experience, which is good. And back to here. So I'm going to go with that one and confirm it. Okay. And then I'm going to go with the Earthen Clod, and I'm going to fire at the Archer, confirm the target, and... Oh, plus two, so that's <laughs> nice. That's a total of four damage overall, and they are only on one health left. I do have a potion that I could neck if I need to, but I don't think I will. End the turn, and they're going to shoot at me. So they've drawn a minus one card. It shows on the right here. A minus one and a plus two. Um, because why? Why did they draw them cards? Hmm. Either way, they've hit me for damage. Uh, damage 2. You can either burn cards to ignore the damage, or you can just take it. I'm going to take it. I've got enough health. So back to me. This time, I want to get over here, and I want to start putting damage out as much as possible. So... I'm probably going to go with um, Rumbling Advance, move to and all adjacent allies and enemies suffer a damage. I'll basically just stand there um, and then these guys will suffer damage. Although if I can get to there, I'd be able to kill that guy. Is that possible? I don't have anything that's 
going to be overly useful on that front. I can do things like Rock Tunnel, which has a move 5 and jump, so I can go over them. Immobilize all the enemies that go through. That's pretty good, but it's also classed as a burn card, which means you get to use once and only once in the game. Unless you have abilities to get burned cards back. So yeah, you've got hands in the day, you've got cards in your hand, discard the cards that you can get back after resting, and then burnt ones which generally don't come back. Uh, let's go with let's go with move three. I really like Dirt Tornado, it's a really good ability. And then we're gonna go What do we wanna go with? What do we wanna go with? Probably um <laughs> Rock Tunnel, place one adjacent obstacle. This character is well, you can you can generally build the characters in many different ways. However, I've gone with a sort of place obstacles and destroy obstacles build. Um, it's pretty useful, I find, if you've only got two characters. If you've got four, it can be probably more of a hindrance than anything else, but there you are. Uh, I'm going to go with probably Crushing Grasp, and we'll go with a Dirt Tornado. My objective is to get there and then kill that guy, but we shall see. For this character, I'm going to go with move three and Poison, and then um, maybe Flanking? No. Um... What we've got. That's move and poison one adjacent enemy and then venom shiv as well. I'm going to go late in the round because I want to basically put poison on two characters and then that makes them easier to take out. And we will end the selection. So they've got 14 which is move and attack. Oh, range 4. To create a 3 damage trap and adjacent. That's the living bones. Oh, that's the archer. And then there's the living bones. Basically they're all going before me so this is not going to work out too well. And let's just take that damage. Um, looks like they draw, they drew a, a minus, a times two card, but I've got a helmet that ignores that. So this guy's going to come up to me and hit me, and then suffer damage, <laughs> and then they're going to hit this one as well. So yeah, we're, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll take that damage all day long, and uh, yeah, it, it's zero. But they're suffering two back. So even though I was attacked twice, I actually. <laughs> <laughs> there was not much uh, going on there, so we're fine. Anyway, we're gonna, we don't even need to move anymore, quite frankly, so we can just straight up attack. I should also point out that each card, you've got the top and bottom, and uh, yes, it will be often, I guess, that you'll play two cards and want to play the top or the bottom, and you'll be extremely frustrated. That's just... <laughs> part of the game. Uh, you've also got the alternate abilities which the top one can always do attack to and the bottom one can always do movement to. Again, there might be some exceptions but that's the general rule of thumb. So I could do uh, a dirt tornado and put it in uh, here. That would only get one character, that would get two characters and if I put it there I would get myself. So muddle all allies and enemies in the target area. I'm actually going to do don't know whether I want to do that or do I? Mm, I could just go three and absolutely belt this guy up top. No, I think that is probably the way forward. Let me just... Uh, no, it's not. It's not for reasons that I'll get to uh, later on because I want to create this element. Bang! Plus one damage, he gets killed. Excellent. I am going to move three. I'm going to move there. The... Hmm... Hang on. Uh, when they die, they'll drop gold. So there's gold there. If you're standing on that at the end of your mercenary's turn, it will pick that up. So I could move there, but my next turn is it's my uh, is move three and poison. Um, right. Yeah, that's fine. I will actually do what I was originally going to do. So I'm going to move three to. Well, I'm not going to move three. I'm going to just move one to there and skip the rest of the movement. I'll neck the portion uh, to bring me up to full health. My health is my health is 12. Yeah, 12 of 12. Yep, yeah, that's fine. And end that turn and we'll pick up the gold. There we go. Currently haven't got any experience on that one. Actually, how do we have experience? Either way, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and get moving. So I want to um, probably move three poison. Let's get this done. And they took a lot of damage because of my card that was in play. Move three up to there. Confirm that. And I will uh, poison that guy there. So poison is just you gain additional damage, I believe. Poison. 
Uh, poison, yep. You can just say your mouse just up mouse over it and it's there. Poison, add plus one attack to all of their rolls. Okay, end the scoundrel's turn. So, we need to pop the top on this door. We've got all these rooms here that we have to get through, so I need to probably keep moving. I am going to... What am I going to do is the question. Well, I do have a couple of decent cards in my hand, and now that this element, the earth element, is here, I can use a lot of these other ones. Allies, uh, adjacent allies suffer a damage, then move one, two, three, four, so I'll be there. I need to move a little bit further than that, ideally. Mm, I'd like to do move five. I think just move four, and we'll do unstable upheaval, which is attack three all adjacent, but I can make it up to two hexes. That's a burn card, though, but if something's just on the other side of this door, which I have a feeling it might be, then there we are. Obviously, if you've played the campaign before and you know what these maps are like, then it's all set out, but there you are. So, this character. We're going to go with... Um, to be honest, we could just go with... Anything, anything of no really. Oh, Flintlock is such a good card. <laughs> um, I just want to do a straight up attack, quite honestly. Mm, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with. Thief snack. And. Backstab. We'll do that and end the selection. They're on, thirty two. So it is the alternate attack, which should be fine. Even at minus one, that's okay. And then we'll move six. So we're going to pop the door. Oh, okay. And what happens when you open the door is any characters, or any enemies, are they called monsters? Yeah, they're called monsters. Um, they immediately draw their cards. So we've got a cultist that's going to move and attack one. And then we've got the archer that's going to move and attack as well. So this guy is going to attack, but they're only going to move two. So this will go one, two. They always go towards the closest enemy. If they are uh, equidistant, it goes to the person who went earliest in the round. So if I stood here, this guy's going to attack me. It's just going to happen. One, two, three, four. Two. That's okay. So I can get... Mm, I can get, if I wanted to, right back there. I could use my boots of stride and get a plus two movement and go back here. Um, I'm going to do it. I don't think it's the right call. <laughs> I know. Uh, is that the right call? No, it's, it's really not the right call. Let's just stick, let's just stick to the plan. So we're going to go to... Um, are they going to move? They're going to move two here. Okay, so I'm just going to stand there. We'll do that. Confirm the movement. And then that's me. Skip the movement. And then he's going to attack. So he'll attack me. So um, stab. Oh, that's a times two. But I do have a helmet. The helmet says any times two becomes a zero. So that's good. I'll receive the one damage. And then the cult is just going to wander forward and then uh, question their life choices. So I can go here. Um, which is good. Right. The problem is I should have moved there because then this one is pretty bad. This one is pretty bad. Okay, I'm going to move there because I need to get in. If I do this top one, it's damage. It's attack three and all adjacent enemies. So there's only one. If I was there, that would have been amazing <laughs> because it would have been burn this and then all enemies up to two hexes where basically every, every single person and... Uh, I wouldn't have suffered the damage, so I'm not going to do. Um, I'm not going to do that top one. I'm just going to use the alternate, which means it's also not burnt as well. So sometimes you have to change your uh, change your change your mind and uh, alter your plans at the, on the fly. That's received damage, which I really don't want to take. It's starting to hurt a bit now. And oh, that's four damage. Okay, we'll have to do that. So I'm going to go over to the scoundrel first. I'm going to go invisible, um, and then I'm going to go with. <laughs> do I do I do this early? No, that would be a bit silly. So you go invisible, means you can't be attacked, and it says double the value of the attack when we next attack. 
with a flintlock, that's a range 4 attack that you can it, it's immediately when you come out from invisible. Minimum damage 10, and then depending on the other buffs, which is single out, if they're not adjacent, that's uh, plus 2. So that would be 12 damage before you do cards, and inevitably, you just roll the botch. That is like the, the boss ender. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, like say, invisible, and... We'll go with... Hmm, what do I want to go with? It doesn't really matter at this stage. Um, probably just... I'll just take... Maybe uh, throwing knives or something. It's, it's something I'm just going to move around, basically. For this guy, I want to... Potentially do a heal. Um, although, one, two, three, four, five... Hmm... Move two would be acceptable. Rumbling advanced. Move two to there. All these enemies will suffer a damage. That's the bottom. And then I can do... What can we do? All my really powerful cards are burned. My level two card there. See, really powerful, it's only a level 2 card. Mm. I'll just not allies and enemies suffer damage. Yeah, we'll do that. And then. And then. And then what? <laughs> That's the question. Okay, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go Avalanche. Create 2. Single hex obstacles in empty spaces adjacent to you. And then I'm going to heal. Let's see if this works. They've gone after us, which is... They're going to move and heal the cultists, and the bandit archer is just going to attack. Okay. So, we're going to go with invisible. Confirm. There we go. So I'm invisible. They cannot... Attack me. So this archer, where are we going? What are we going to do? Move to there. Confirm. Just move adjacent to the archer for next turn. And the scoundrel's turn. For this one, I'm going to heal myself. Because I'm going to get chopped to bits by these guys. This is where, again, I may reconsider my choices. Because I can create two single hex obstacles. You can still shoot over them. They're going to attack three ranged five. However, it's ranged attacks. If you are adjacent to someone who's doing ranged, they're at disadvantage, which means they draw two of these attack modifiers and pick the worst. I didn't really want to go in there, but I'm going to stand next to them. I'm still going to get attacked regardless of what I did, but I've dropped the earth element anyway. They're just going to heal themselves. That's no big surprises there. And then the archers are going to attack me, but they're at disadvantage. So, in this case, it's a plus one and a zero. They have to take the zero. This is a plus two and a minus one. They have to take the minus one. I'll receive all that damage. All right. Back to attacking. Um, so, I want to do crater. Adjacent allies and enemies suffer a damage. That's four damage out, including my ally. Then move which is jump, but I probably won't move, I'll just stand there, and then they'll suffer another two damage. So that's going to be three, six, nine, twelve damage. Good damage economy, but it's burning the cards. Hmm. Or do we just want to go with, say, a crater? The top one, which is... No, it's a range one. I'm going to do that. And I'll go with this guy. We've only got two things to do now. I mean, when we come out with stealth here, we are just going to annihilate whatever we hit. <laughs> There's no getting about that. Um, unless we roll really low. So we're going to do that. Bandit Archer is going to move and attack, and oh, the Cultist is going to summon a Lemon Bones. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to go for attack three. <laughs> look, at the, look at the potential damage. Okay, um, I for any um, 
people who've played Gloomhaven before, you, you're probably thinking he's burning them cards really too, too fast and burning my abilities too fast. You're right, you're right. The plan was never to finish this thing because it just takes too long, especially with explanations, but still. Um, so, because of the bonuses in play, when I come out with Stealth and Attack, um, it's going to be 14 for this guy because uh, I get plus 2 attack on it because they're adjacent allies. Um, I mean, I could, I could just flintlock. No, don't flintlock, it's a burn cart. Right, let's just let's just kill this guy. So, there you go, 14 damage, amazing. <laughs> it goes down, then I'm going to move to, I'm basically going to move away from him because we know what's coming. So, end that. Um, obviously, they're going to do their thing, which is move, um, but I can move after that. Oh, that's four damage. I'm going to burn a card to ignore that damage. I don't want to take that again. And there's another plus one. Oh, it's another four damage. I'm going to have to take it. Okay, let's just do this. Um, so, confirm the action. The first one is suffer a damage. So he suffers a damage. Sadly, they're moved. And then I'm going to move to there. Confirm the movement. Skip the rest. And then these all suffer more damage. Excellent. Good experience. And then a straight up punch. Ah, and it was a botch. So that's botched it, which means no damage. I do have a hammer and I could have stunned him, but I didn't want to do that until I had like a big attack going on. I thought I'd kill him. Didn't work out. So he's going to summon a living bones, which uh, there it is there. And it's got nothing on this turn. And there you go. So I am completely out of cards with the crack heart and I'm completely out of cards with this character. So this is where I think there's a bit of a change. Um, you've got two types of rest, long rest and short rest. Long rest, um, you go on initiative 99, you burn one of the discarded cards so it goes down to the bottom here and then you get the rest of your cards back. Short rest is it randomly burns one of these discarded and you just get to carry on. I think, was that at the end of the previous round rather than the start of the other one. Either way, I don't mind. This works. I'm going to, against my better judgement, uh, short rest and it's drawn the card that I really wanted to play this turn, which is heal. So I'm going to have to redraw, you say, take a damage to yourself and it's drawn that one there. So that's done there. Over here I will do a... F Ooh, what do we do? What do we do? Um... I also just realised the cultist was this killed itself. Was oh, it might have taken damage after the summoning, right? Um, I'm going to short rest. Why not? And it's throwing knives. It's a really good card, but I can't afford to really take the damage. So let's go ahead and start wiping things out. So I'm going to have to move three and do probably one of those. For this guy, we're going to do I think heal four on the bottom is going to be another heal range 2 and end the selection. So I've actually got to do a lot of damage here, but hopefully we can, uh, like I say, get some good healing out. So, um, confirm the targets, because these guys are going to have to shoot me, because I'm the closest. Ah, they are targeting 2, though. It's only attack 1, I'm not too concerned about it. I'll just confirm those. So I healed up quite nicely. Still worried about the scoundrel, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to move to there and confirm it. I do want to move to there. If I move there, I'll be able to get some gold. Um, it would require my boots of striding though to activate that. Uh, why not? Uh, the, you know, their name and all of that. We'll go there. I will skip the rest of the movement. I will poison um, that guy because I want to try and kill him. Um, although it's only attack three, I could probably kill one of the archers instead. What is it going to do? Attack 3, target 2. Yeah, that's probably the most threatening at this stage. Um, it would have been better to attack one of these. Um, but if I get a plus... Uh, if I get a, a good roll here... Yeah, there's that Squellington dead. And these guys are going to shoot both of us anyway. But they're at disadvantage because they are not moving. And I get some gold. So maybe the good player, maybe not. Yeah. They're at disadvantage, and they've rolled zeros. So, yeah, that seemed to have worked out, unless this is loads of pluses. So, we've suffered no damage so far. Again, though, burned some more cards that I really didn't want, but there we are. Um, and it's round seven. But, I'm not going to continue on, because even though you may want to go through and do all of this and pop the doors, 
it's going to be more spoilers. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to see some more stuff. But it's. I think this is fairly representative of what you're going to be doing in the game. Now, obviously, there's different characters. You can have more than uh, the six characters to start with, but there's several to unlock. You have, obviously, different play styles, different builds. When you level up, you gain an additional card, different perks, etc. But, uh, yeah, the... The long and the short of it is, it's the board game, but on PC. Um, it just works. Let's say, slight changes aside, it just, it's the game I was wanting. It's, I wanted to play Gloomhaven digitally, and you can. And it is, like I say, faithful. It is fun. It is extremely frustrating. For some reason, confirmation bias, you seem to always get <laughs> the zeros when you don't need them. And I'm thinking, nah, it wasn't like that in the board game, but... I'm pretty sure it was, it's just for some reason it's uh, more uh, pronounced on PC, but that's my own uh, personal thing there. But yeah, very much having fun with Gloomhaven, like I say I got about 30 hours uh, on it and very much enjoying playing through the campaign uh, cooperatively with a friend. And yeah, I don't really know what else to say. If you're still here and like what you see, links are in the description. Uh, if you're a fan of the board game and want it on PC, this is this is what you're after. That's, that's it. Um, yeah, one of my favourite games this year. It, it was going to be. It was going to be. It's 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 the board game I truly love, and it's now digital. So there you are. Either way, hope you have enjoyed this little look at Gloomhaven. If you want to see more, by all means, let me know. If you have any different suggestions for different uh, card players, any mistakes that uh, you think could be corrected or whatever, then by all means, let me know in the comments. And as always, we'll go from there. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, and generic partings.